on. Hey everybody, happy Friday. Back again for another edition of What Are We Doing Here? Just kidding. Good to see everyone. Uh, I'm going to, this is actually going to be an extension on what we talked about last week. I'm going to kind of gradually keep going through these concepts, reviewing them. For those of you that are new to, um, to theory, but know a little bit, or uh, maybe know a little bit more than a little bit, this should be, be in range for you. I say beginner to intermediate. We're going to pick up in some of the concepts that we talked about last week. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, well, let me tell you, discount code RB300. These sales run only through the weekend, 60% off my Beato book bundle, right? So it's my Beato book and my Instagram, YouTube transcription things. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I want to say it up front, please follow me there at Rick Beato one uh, I post there almost every day, new guitar stuff. It's my place to actually play guitar. And uh, even if you hate Instagram, follow me there anyways. Uh, and then 40% off for the ear training course. And we're going to talk about ear training is connect, always connected to music theory. It's all, they're all interrelated. How do you hear? If you hear a song, you know what you're hearing, okay? So let's start here with seventh chords. I have seventh chords written on here and i'm going to take the formula that we talked about last week if the major scale is just one through seven what is a seventh chord well seventh chord is one three five seven the first part of a seventh chord is a major triad right this is a major seven okay if it says that it would be a, a major seven if i go like this it would be a dominant seven okay so major seven is just with a major seven. So if it's in the key of C, you've got one, two, three. So C, E, G, B. That's C major seven. One, three, five, major seven, right? That would be this without that, right? So that's what you call a major seventh chord. Just follow along. You can always go back and review this, right? You can screenshot stuff, whatever you need to do. But all of this is in my Beato book. So you can just refer to that, print it out. It's a PDF, 700 pages. Um, if I flat the seven, it becomes a dominant seven. That would be like a you know, C7 chord or G7. Let's say G7, right? So G, B, D, F. F is a flat seven. If you think of a G major scale, F sharp would be in a G major scale. Flat seven gives you a G major chord and then that resolves to C because it's the five chord in the key of C, okay? Um, now, there's other types of seventh chords as well, all right? You can have a minor seven, C minor seven, for example. Let's just do it like this, C, E flat, G, and I have the B flat here. So this chord would be C minor seven or C with a minus, C minor seven, okay? If I had this... If it actually had a major on it, that'd sound like this. That's actually a minor major seven. Kind of sounds like James Bond. Um, and I, it would you would say, so it has the major seven, C minor, major seven. And then this note would become B. So you have the C minor triad, C, E flat, G with a major seven on top. Okay, that's good for film scoring, stuff like that, film noir. Uh, what are some other things I can do? Well... I can uh, flat the seven and flat the fifth. We call this a minor seven flat five chord. Not uncommon in pop music and rock, uh, uncommon in pop music nowadays, didn't used to be. This would be C minor seven flat five. Remember, minus is a shortcut for minor, so you don't have to write a small m or min. This is a, this is a quicker way of doing it. Remember, minus minor. Okay, C minor seven flat five. So you C minor. There's the flat five and then the the the, uh, the flat seven. If I lower that flat seven, then you start getting in diminished seventh chords, right? I could lower that. Well, that would entail going like this, double flatted seven there. That would give me a C diminished seven. Other people write it this C diminished seven. But that circle stands for diminished. You can always write half diminished, 
would be like this. C diminished 7 equals C minor 7 flat 5, right? Shortcut symbols people have been using forever. Billy, is this making sense to people? It is, right? Of course. Okay, what is this double flatted 7th with a diminished though, right? Double flatted 7. C diminished 7, remember? C diminished 7. Well, double flatted 7, so if you take a major 7, you can make it a minor 7 or flat 7. You can make it a double flat 7. So it really is B double flat, or it's actually no A. So if you take a C diminished, 1 flat 3, flat 5, double flat 7. That would be a flat 7, minor 7, flat 5, diminished 7. Okay? Not that tricky. There's other things that you can do, too, to these chords. You can augment chords by raising the fifth. Anytime anybody says something is augmented, and any type of augmented chord means it has a sharp five, okay? So one, three, sharp five is an augmented triad. If it's in C, take C major, take the, the fifth of the chord, one, three, five, raise it up half step, and, and you get C augmented, right? Well, you can put a seventh on there. This would be C augmented major seven. C plus major seven. Plus is the symbol for augmented. So remember, minus is minor. The circle is diminished. The circle with a line through it is minor seven flat five or half diminished. Half, H-A-L-F, diminished. Or, uh, and the plus equals augmented. Okay, so these are the common symbols. There's really four common symbols that we use uh, in shorthand musical notation right there. Once again, this is all in my book as a reference. But when you see these things, if you're reading a lead sheet, if you're trying to learn a song, if you try to learn Stairway to Heaven, the second chord uh, would be really a G sharp uh, it has a G-sharp augmented chord in it, right? But, but it's like A minor major 7 is really the chord, okay, which has this augmented triad in it. A minor major 9, actually, is what it would be. Uh, so this would be a C augmented major 7. Uh, if I go like this, this would be that flat 7. This would be C augmented 7, or like a C augmented dominant 7, okay? Um, you can do, um, if I did a sharp five with a flat seven and a flat three, then you get into this. Um, that's really an inverted add nine chord right there. Right, so that really isn't, it acts as a different chord. So we didn't talk about it. Those are your, all your basic seventh chords, okay? Now, within the... Um, you can have extended seventh chords too with ninths, elevenths, thirteenths. We talked about that a little bit last week, but I want to go back to added note chords because added note chords I talked about, but I want to talk a little bit more. You can have the add nine. So let's say you say C add nine. Very common chord you see if you play guitar or whatever, play keyboards. C add nine. One, two, three, five, or one, two, three, nine. Okay, add nine. Nine equals two. Remember that from last week? The 11, if somebody says, oh, it's an 11, that equals four, the fourth note of the scale. 13 equals six. Up, they're all up the octave, though. But C add nine would actually be this. C, E, G, then the add nine would be D. So one, three, five, nine. Now, if I were to be theoretically correct, C add two would be one, two, three, five. Right? Here's your triad, C, E, G. Here's the triad here, C, E, G. C, this is C major. This is C major. This is your add two. Add two. This is your add nine. Add nine. Okay? Add two, add nine. It's just the octave it's in. No big deal, right? Here's your, there's your add two. This is your add nine. But this could also be add nine. I call that C add nine. It's just the same notes, right? Right? 
It's very, very common sound that you've heard a million times. Beautiful sound. I love add nines. Okay, so there are other types of added note chords uh, that are common. You could say C add four. C add four. Okay. What does that mean? It means take a C major chord, C, E, G, and add the fourth to it. One, three, four, five. Think of a C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. What are, or, or forget, we don't need C there, it's the octave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, what is this, right? There's the five, there's the four, there's the three. Right here is the chord, right? That's all that means. You take a C major scale, take the first note of the scale, third note, fourth, and fifth, put it together, you get a C add four. You're like, Rick, why do I need to know an add four? Because it sounds cool. Ooh. Bah. Right? And if you do it, if you play it with a different spacing, uh, if you, <laughs> spacing, um, if you, <laughs> you can play these chords with different spacings, right? So I can play, play it like that, I can play. Beautiful, I can play. Beautiful sound, right? So I'll take those, I can do it in C. I can put A minor, I can put F in the bass. So I get C add four over F. Beautiful sound, right? Gives you F major seven, nine, chord, right? So these little fragments here, these little added note things, this is what I teach in the ear training course. I teach to hear these separate structures. So you got these structures with a bass note because pretty much most chords are just like, like a major seventh chord is a minor chord, right? Let's see you have F major seven. You have A minor, take the A, go down to major third, put F in it. And that is an F major seven chord. F major seven is really an A minor chord with an F under it, right? F, A, C, E, A, C, E is A minor. So understanding these formulas, the whole reason to learn theory is because, well, there's two things. One reason is so that you can talk about music to someone without playing. You can say, oh yeah, this song goes like this. Um, all the things you are. F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, A flat major seven, D flat major seven, two, five, one, and C, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. Then we go to E flat, F minor, C minor seven, F minor seven, B flat seven, E flat major seven, A flat major seven. And 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 I'm like, okay, so let's see, uh, one, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, four, no, uh, wait, no, six, two, five, one, four, and A flat, okay, I got that. Then two, five, one, and C, okay, I got that. Oh, wait, the C's two bars, yeah. And then 6514 in E flat. This is how, how you can memorize things. When I hear these songs, when I'm doing the top pop, um, you know, songs, top 10 songs. So if it's a single note thing, I'm using the intervals. I know what the distance, distance between notes when I hear a riff. All right. If it's Taylor Momsen and I'm, and I'm, uh, and it's a song in seven that she has Kim Thale playing and I hear that, I'm like, okay, yeah, I know what that is. Or if it's a chord progression, you know how I kind of instantly hear the chord progressions? Well, once you hear two chords, you can extrapolate what the other chords are going to be, okay? You just make, you can make inferences by knowing music theory. There's a great video with John Frusciante on YouTube where he talks about why it's important to use music theory and why he knows about music theory. Uh, really interesting. Um, should check it out. Those of you that think, oh, well, rock players don't know this or pop musicians don't know this. No, the producers know this stuff for the most part. Not all of them. Not all of them do, but the smart ones do. The ones that make that make all the big hit songs, they know. Max Martin, yeah, he knows this stuff. He does, definitely. All the pros know this stuff. They just do. They know how chord progressions go together. They know how to put these added note things in there, and they know how to how to put the interesting notes, or what I call the haunting tones. Haunting tones are these dissonances that grab your ear. You may not notice it at first, right? If I have a, a, a C minor sound and... That's a 
that's a flat six. If I didn't have it in there, it'd just be a boring C minor seven. But when I put that, ooh, that grabs my ear, or if I just have it in the melody. Ooh, right? beautiful sounds right that's where the those those haunting tones which are called upper extensions are the things that give music intensity suspense beauty okay uh so that's an add four add sixes don't worry about that you don't really you can have it's just a six chord if you had a, if you had a six if you had a six to it it just becomes a c6 okay um you then you have um then you have suspensions, okay? I should have said suspensions here. That should be next here. I, I wrote secondary dumps. Uh, I went suspensions, what I meant. Sus. Okay, so suspensions. Like, um, C sus4. That would be the notes C. Suspended means you take the third and you make it the fourth. C, F, G. Normally, a C major chord would be C, E, G. But that E, you suspend it, and it becomes one, four, five, right? C sus four. So the first note and fourth note and fifth note of the scale. You get a C major scale. Take one, four, and five. Once again, I can play uh, in the bass. Okay, so that's that sus four right there. You can also have C sus two. Duh. C sus2 would be, instead of the sus4 in the middle, you replace the third with the second, sus2. C, D, G, one, two, five. First note of the scale, second note of the scale, fifth note of the scale. I could put ba, or I could put ba in the bass, B flat. I could put da, B in the bass. There's your mu chord for you Steely Dan fans. That's the mu chord. It's not really the mu chord. It's really just A chordal over B, but they call it the mu chord. Uh, 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 Donald Fagan would call it the mu chord. Or maybe Walter Becker did. I'm not sure. One of them called it the mu chord. So this would be C sus2, right? C sus2. D is suspending from the E. E is normally there but you're suspending it. Because when I say suspending it, it means it wants to resolve. That's a sus2 wanting to resolve to the major and the sus4 wants to resolve down to the major as well. Sus2 wants to resolve up, sus4 wants to resolve down. But these little chord fragments make it easy to hear other kind of chords. If I hear that sus2 chord and I hear ba in the bass, I hear that I'm like, oh, that's a minor 11 chord. I don't have to know that it's a minor 11, I just have to know it's a minor 11 sound. If I put da uh, in the bass, I'm like, oh, that's a major seven with a flat fifth. So I got A, C, D, G. So one, three, flat five, major seven. If I had one, three, five, major seven, that'd be A, a flat major seven. This is A flat major seven with a flat five. Or if I move the bass down to G, I've got G sus. Okay. So being able to hear these things, first of all, you, you know the theory and the ear are completely intertwined. Okay. Discount code, shameless plug, but if you... The, the, the whole thing that to buy my ear training course or buy my Beato book bundle here is so that you can open it theoretically, the PDF, print it out. I usually print out chapters that you're working on and have just mini little books of them in three ring binder. I think it's easier to take things in chunks like that, right? So you open it up and you follow along with that. Oh, okay. Oh, I see where this is, right? Just look for it. Um, so... The thing with, if, if you don't know the theory, you can't 
identify what you're hearing, right? If you don't know what a major seventh chord is, how do you know when you're hearing it? You can hear this and you say, okay, yeah, I recognize that sound. I don't know what it is, but I recognize it. But if you say, oh, that's the sound of a major seven, um, then you can put the name to it, okay? So once again, theory is just about putting names to things, okay? Um, let's see here. Okay, we're doing good. Um, the other thing are uh, extended chords, seventh chords, like minor 11s, minor 13s, are basically these triads or added note structures with different bass notes, okay? This is how you build these chords, all right? I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, about a couple chords that I use that are not really talked about. I'll talk about one of them because it's very common. Other than sus, you have these sus sharp four, what I call Lydian triad. So C Lydian, that would be one sharp four. So C F sharp G, okay, one sharp four. Whoops, what am I doing? Five. Don't like, don't like that. So. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is C major. If I sharp the four, that's C Lydian. It's a C Lydian mode. I call it that. So one, sharp four, five. Those are the one, the, the, the first note, the fourth note, and fifth note of a C Lydian mode. Okay. That is a very particular sound. Okay, so I did one. Sharp four, F, F sharp, da, G. Sorry, I'm a bad singer, but I can hear it. Um, once again, if I put ba in the bass, maybe I voice it like like that, or I voice it like that. You get some really beautiful sounds. That's a Lydian triad, right? I'll I'll demonstrate in the key of F. So if you take an F major scale, let's say, uh, so F major. Okay, so an Ionian sound, if I used one, four, five, and invert it, I'm sorry, if I play, um, I could play like a, uh, I'll give you two different Lydian examples. If I play B flat Lydian here, I play B flat Lydian, B flat E F over F major. I have F major there. It's a beautiful sound. Or I can play F Lydian over F major. Di very different sounds. Right? Really cool. If I did it over C, that's that B flat Lydian sound over C. It gives you like a C7, C7 sus sound. If I did, that's a C with a sus4 in the major seven. Beautiful sound. So these little, little triadic uh, uh, things. When you invert them or you play them as arpeggios, they work great. If you're shredding on something and you want to play something that is really modern sounding, those are the little fragments that you that you pick from. You grab those little suspended triads or minor triads, major triad, add nine voicings, things like that, right? And you and you add them, you play them over a static chord, and it's like, whoa, what is that? That sounds amazing. That's what you want to be doing, right? Got all that stuff in my book. If you hear me play anything on my Instagram, once again, for those of you who are new here, follow me on Instagram, at rickbeato1. Put it down. A lot of the stuff I play on there, I'll play like a, I'll play some backing chords so that you can really hear what the dissonances are and the resolutions are against a static chord that I'm playing on, or chord progression, right? So that's why these things are, these are very simple, simple concepts, right? This is a Lydian triad. So the, I was just playing two different Lydian triads. I did over F, I did B flat. That's B flat Lydian, one sharp, four, five. B flat E, F, or um, F Lydian, F, B, C, right? Here's the, the uh, 
Here's F Lydian over C. I can do C, C Lydian over C. Do you see how it all sounds like it's lifting? You go from B flat. Then you go to F Lydian over C major. Then you go to C Lydian over C major. Beautiful. If I play da in the bass and I do that C Lydian, uh, if I do C Lydian over E minor, right? Beautiful sound. That's a that minor with a flat six, right? Love those sounds. Those are the haunting tones, those upper extensions that make music really cool. Every hit song, for the most part, will have those, and any type of modern production has those kind of dissonances in there. You may not hear them. They're hidden in the background, maybe in a synth pad or something. Those are the things that grab your ear, even when you don't realize it. You're like, why do I like that one spot? Well, because it's got a sus, sus four in there. It's got some weird interval that catches your ear. So that's the whole thing about learning theory. It's knowing these kind of concepts that um, the ba they're the really easy concepts once you get a handle on it um, that can improve your writing dramatically. It can improve your ear dramatically. When I hear a chord progression, I know what it is. I don't have perfect pitch. I'm not like my son Dylan where he hears anything and he knows what it is, right? I, you know, for him, I play these weird voicings. He's like, ah, oh, that's, you know, a flat minor seven over F major seven sharp five. A flat minor seven, F major seven sharp five. Well, that would be F major seven sharp five. His ear can pick out those separate units and say, oh, I hear the top part, I hear the bottom part, right? Uh, but using relative pitch, you can do the exact same thing if you practice your training course. A lot of practice, not overnight. You gotta learn your intervals first, Got to learn them harmonically, together, melodically. You got to learn triads. You got to learn seventh chords. You got to learn added note chords or down in seven sus four, major seven sus four. You learn all those things in my ear training course. And this is all theory. Those of you that contribute on, on um, Damien, thank you so much that contribute on Super Chat. On these things, the, the computer is very far away. I should be wearing my glasses and I can see it. But each week when you contribute to Super Chat, I'm sorry that um, that I can't see this far, but I, I got close to see it. Anyways, thank you so much for that. Really, really appreciate it. If you haven't seen my video on uh, the latest one that I did, the two latest videos, my interview with Adam Franklin from Swerve Driver, who is just absolutely brilliant guitar player and singer. I love Swerve Driver. I've wanted to have him on my channel for the last four years. I finally got him to do an interview and it's great. He's, he's a brilliant musician. You should check it out. And then I did 10 female um, musicians that I like to watch on YouTube and Instagram. Some of you know, th know them, uh, uh, some of them, cause you, you've, you follow them and stuff, but uh, these are, uh, uh, musicians that I like to watch with my daughters and, and um, because I want them to hear and see great playing. And um, I think it's important for them to, to have something to kind of look up to, which is what we all do, right? We all look up to these great players and try to uh, get ideas from them and things like that. And, and, uh, to me, it's really inspiring. I said this yesterday that uh, the you know some of the greatest players ever are alive right now. Any old people with white hair that tell you, oh no no, it was way better in the past. Some things were better. People people could play live, yeah. But the best players, I mean, there there's some phenomenal players out today. Just absolute mind boggling players that have reinvented. Uh, instruments like the guitar. So anyways, that's why Instagram is a great place to go. Thank you, everybody. Discount code. You guys are the best. Have a great weekend. We'll see you later.